Who is the most upset that Mr. Bolton has decided to testify? You've got to think Donald Trump is for one major reason, Tom, and that is Rudy Giuliani. I think that Bolton knows where all the bodies are buried. He knows that Giuliani played a crucial role. I think that's the big wild card. This is America. This guy, you know, whatever you think of his politics, right, left, whatever, all the cable war news, in America, in a given trial or process, we want voices heard as someone is innocent until proved guilty. Are we going through that process right now? No. I, I do think it's going to be really hard, Tom, to smear John Bolton. Uh, I think that McConnell is in a really difficult spot. I think he needs to have at least the pretense of a fair trial. So Bolton may get his hearing. I, I don't think this will lead to Trump's uh, ouster, uh, his conviction, but it's going to be a body blow to him. Do, do you think he'll be called to testify, Greg? Uh, well, obviously the Democrats are united in calling him to testify. I think you only really need four Republicans, Francine, and I think that, you know, Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, I mean, I think there are enough to get people to have him testify. Here's the crucial issue. Even if the testimony is damaging, most all of the Republicans will stick together and say this still does not rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors. It'll hurt Trump, but I don't think it will oust him. Uh, is it a game changer if he does testify and confirm some of the things that we found? Is it a game changer with President Trump's base? Uh, probably not. I think the bigger game changer with the president's base is that he had this aversion to any kind of Middle East uh, uh, involvement. He wanted to get out. He's famously isolationist, and his base agreed. Now, all of a sudden, he's, he's totally flipped. I think that has raised a lot of issues within his base. We have a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's moving, I guess, between the White House and the Pentagon as well. Give us an update of how you see the relationship of the Pentagon. They're under immense stress. They're under global stress. We see the headlines from the Associated Press just in the recent minutes. We've got 2,200 Marines moving from the Mediterranean around to the Persian Gulf. Great. What's the relationship in the two miles from the Potomac over to the White House? It's a great question because I think this administration is understaffed. They miss Mattis. There were a lot of really... I've heard this three times in the last 24 hours. I want you to explain to our global audience sure. why General Mattis, General Kelly, and the others are missed. Well, they were really good, and they had a strategic view of the world. Uh, they'd been around the block a few times. I think now you've got inexperienced people who have not been around the block. And yesterday, what did you see? A, a big confusion over whether we really are going to pull out of Iraq or not. We had to reverse ourselves. Big confusion over cultural uh, parts of Iran right. that might get hit. The, the right hand is not talking to the left hand. That would not happen if Mattis were still here. Greg, what is so, so important here, and this has been a constant theme in my conversations, Admiral Stravitas folks writing for Bloomberg opinion in the last 48 hours, General Kimmett, Mark Kimmett, and others as well, all have the same message. We need a diplomatic and political strategy. Is it truly, are we truly devoid of a strategy in this Washington? Maybe it's just not clear to many of us, but it doesn't... What is the strategy? I don't know. It doesn't seem very obvious, does it? There are some good people like Mark Warner of Virginia, a moderate okay, Democrat, fine. who are saying, yes, there probably were reasons for us to move on the Iranians last week, but there has to be an end game. And for a president who doesn't want to be involved in the Middle East, this is very confusing. 